Welcome, my friends. Welcome to my world. I'm your host, Kevin Rutherford. It is Wednesday, April 13th. That means it's Destination Health Day. We are here live. We're going to open the phone lines right now, so start dialing. I promise if you dial right now, you will get through. The number to join us, 855-950-3835. It is Destination Health, so it's all health all day. We'll get to those calls here in just a little bit. I uh, have a couple things I want to go over, Going kind of going back to the basics again. You know, I, I dug back through a lot of our material going back eight years when we started this, looked at the results we've had over the years, some of the things we've recommended that worked, some of the things that didn't necessarily work, some of the things we didn't understand, and just uh, just trying to figure out what we've learned and uh, what we still maybe don't know. And a pretty clear pattern emerged. I, I've talked about this a little before, but I, I think it's interesting to point this out because it really does help simplify things. And it really comes down to the idea of how much variety do we really need in our diet? You know, there's this thought that the human body needs a ton of variety in the diet because we need so many different nutrients, or we think we do. Uh, a lot of what we think about what nutrients we need in what amounts, we have to remember all of it has been done on research of people eating the standard American diet. That changes a lot of things. Uh, part of the standard American diet, there is a lot of problems. We know that, but there are things within the diet, especially in grains and other foods, that are anti-nutrients. They actually bind to nutrients and carry them out of the body. We know that many of the nutrients we get from plants aren't all that compatible with the human body. We're much better off getting those same nutrients from animal sources. Um, in the beginning, I remember we had a huge focus on trying to get enough omega-3 for people. It's, it's an in, uh, I worked on it for a while myself. We were supplementing and still not seeing good results. And turns out that it's not that we need so much omega-3, it's that we have too much omega-6 in our diet. And it actually makes more sense to eliminate all of the omega-6 we're getting and one of the other experiments I, I kind of did in the last month, I know I was trying a lot of things all at once, but I didn't really eat a lot of seafood um, for a couple reasons. One, I was just trying to experiment with something, but for some reason I just didn't really have a taste for it like I normally do. And I, I tend to follow my body. I, I've been going through phases of really, really craving beef, really craving pork. Then sometimes I'm really craving chicken and I eat more of that. There are times when I crave seafood and, and in the last month, really haven't. But I just wonder if that's because I've been very, very meat heavy and it's all been correctly raised, pastured, forest, forested, grass fed, which increases the omega-3 in the meat, decreases the omega-6, and maybe I just don't need that seafood. Certainly nothing wrong with eating it, and I, it's not like I'm going to quit, but I do tend to follow my taste buds and cravings a little more now, and I started thinking, why might that be? Maybe my body just doesn't need the omega-3s from seafood, because I'm getting plenty from the meat I'm eating. Now, if you're eating conventionally raised meat, it's the opposite. You're going to get a lot of omega-6 in there and, and hardly any omega-3 at all. So I started to look back at, you know, when we first started talking about this, we really, and I'm going back eight years when we first started talking about health and diet, and we were really talking more about starting off grain-free, more of a paleo-based diet, not really talking a lot about uh, carbs necessarily, just cutting out you know, added sugars and those kind of things. And when I look back, we were getting really good results out of about five, maybe six out of ten people. 
And then we'd get four or five that would say, well, yeah, I feel better. I'm losing a little bit of weight. But there were still some real health issues. And, you know, a paleo-based diet, everything should be based in paleo because that, that addresses the food quality and the real human foods, the, the foods we should be eating as uh, and the foods we ate as hunter-gatherers. But again, think about what's changed when we were hunter-gatherers till now. If you were a hunter-gatherer in North America, how much fruit did you have access to? Almost none most of the year, and small amounts, maybe berries throughout the summer, and, and berries are one of the lower sugar fruits for sure, maybe some apples in the fall, um, we don't grow a whole lot of fruit. Most parts of the world don't until you get closer to the equator. And that fruit used to be very, very different than the fruit we have today, which has been not genetically modified, but it has been hybridized and crossbred and bred for very specific, um, or maybe I should say cultivated for very specific characteristics and the one they always go for is sweet because humans love sweet so the nutrients we get from fruit which today's fruit they're pretty empty of nutrients but I, I don't think that was a big part of our diet and obviously it wasn't necessary to be healthy because lots of societies around the world hunter gatherer tribes and cultures didn't consume fruit and they were really healthy there are hunter-gatherer cultures that really didn't consume many plants at all. And they were really healthy. So the paleo-based diet worked for some people, but the more metabolically sick somebody was, the less it worked. Then we really started talking about keto. And when we switched to keto, and I, I think that it certainly mattered that our tribe was basically truck drivers who were really metabolically sick, about twice as sick as the average American, which is really scary. But we know that. And keto worked really well. I would say maybe 7 out of 10 people, we got really good results out of keto, a pretty significant improvement over just paleo. And remember, in keto, we weren't really focusing a lot on food quality. We would talk about it, but You know, we also have the term dirty keto, which does not apply to how many carbs you're eating. It applies to the quality of the food. Are you eating a keto diet out of fast food restaurants or or are you eating a more keto diet like I eat now where there are no bad oils, we're not eating any of the foods we're not supposed to, and our meat is all raised properly? Then we would get even better results, which really we created then NDK, which was nutrient-dense keto, combining the two philosophies. We want to eat foods that are paleo. We want to make them very, very low carb. Now we're addressing both sides of the health issue or or multiple uh, facets of the health issue. We're addressing the high carbohydrate count, which is really good metabolically. Get those blood sugars down. Many things improve after that. You lose weight, clear up all that brain fog, aches and pains go away. What we noticed then was there were still some people not responding well, and they were mostly women. That that was a real pattern. We talked about it a lot. The um, Most of the time, the husband was the driver. He'd be out on the road. He'd start doing keto or NDK. He'd have great results. He'd go home might talk his spouse into it, they wouldn't get the same results. It was a a very, very common topic on the show for a long time. Our original hypothesis was that, oh, well, women are more hormonally complicated, which they are. Maybe they're not getting enough nutrition from this. And we would kind of switch them back to a more paleo-based. We'd add more carbohydrates in because I don't know why we thought carbohydrates might have helped. It didn't. More nutrients might help. 
But it turns out that when we made kind of our last switch in diet recommendation, which was, look, let's make this really easy. Let's just try carnivore. Just eat animal products. It it simplifies the whole thing. Now, in the beginning, it sounded really extreme. It's absolutely not extreme. What's extreme is the standard American diet. It's It's an extreme experiment that has failed miserably and has probably killed more people than anything else on the planet, really. And and not only killed them, but killed them slowly so that it's miserable. And that problem is getting far worse. The statistic I talked about last week, 30% of teenagers in the United States are now pre-diabetic. That is criminal. I can't imagine what that's going to do to our healthcare system in the next couple of decades. And I don't have any hope that we'll really turn this around on any big scale. I really don't. Um, I wouldn't even know how to attempt to do it on a big scale. All I can do is is get on the air and talk about it and help people online and and hope it spreads. But I don't see us making any big impact. And And I don't even mean just me, but all of the practitioners who believe this way. I don't see us making any huge impact on this. But we saw that with carnivore, we get much better results. Women as well. So I don't believe at all that women needed more carbs. We thought that for a while. We were just trying to figure out what the difference was. Do they need more nutrients? Uh, Maybe, maybe not. But it certainly seems like we can get an awful lot of our nutrient needs from a well-designed carnivore diet. And well-designed, it's easy. This isn't complicated. When I say well-designed, what I mean is the best quality animal products you can get. And the more of that you eat, the healthier you seem to get. And we just really aren't struggling with some of the issues we were on some of these other diets. Now, Carnivore, for me, is also very, very keto. It really is for everybody. But I tend to make my carnivore diet pretty fat-heavy. I focus more on fat than protein. You're getting tons of protein on any carnivore diet because animal products are by far our best source of complete proteins. So this pattern seems to be uh, holding up pretty well, seems to be true. And if you think about it, The more foods we take out of our diet, the healthier we get. So the standard American diet, eat whatever the hell you want. There's, you know, a million products in a grocery store these days and more and more all the time. And then we would talk about superfoods. Oh, but if you just eat uh, aronia berries or if you just eat more kale or these superfoods, you'll be healthy. No, you won't. It, it's never worked. I've never heard of, I've never really had anybody tell me, oh yeah, I started eating a lot of kale and I feel so much better now. I just don't hear that. It doesn't work. What works seems to be limiting the types of food that are in your diet. And the more we limit the types of foods, the better our outcomes seem to be. All right, so um, I do want to get to calls. We've got... Uh, Call on the line. We've got lines open. By all means, jump in and join us, 855-950-3835. I'm also taking questions on the website, healthytribe.com. So if you head on over to healthytribe.com, right at the top, you should see a post, and it says post questions for the show today. And I will continue to monitor that and look for questions there. So if you're shy or you don't want to be on the air or maybe you don't have time or whatever, but you can throw a question in there, um, uh, I will jump on those as well. All right, let's get to the calls. Let's find out what's on your mind today. We're going to get started in California. Steve, welcome to the program. I just realized that uh, about a week ago that you were back online. Did you send out any kind of um, uh, notifications? Because I didn't get anything. Um, We only really reached out to our two tribes, Healthy Tribe and Trucking Tribe. And the reason for that is we're 
we're in the process of building our own network. We're testing new technologies. We're trying new things all the time. We're still running into technical issues because we're trying so many new things. So we thought we would just annoy our tribes uh, with that kind of stuff. And, and as we work out the technology, we're adding new shows. We're adding better ways to listen. We should be rolling out our own app within the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're building our entire okay. infrastructure from the ground up this time. We are programming everything custom. Okay. We're not going to depend on anybody else's platform, so we can't be canceled. Um, so we're, we're while we're working out all the bugs, we really didn't want to blast it out to everybody. So um, it, the best way to stay informed on what we're doing, you know, daily is to be in the two tribes. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely a um, member. Uh, and the, the way I found out is I went on your Let's Truck there, Bison Party of America, and I'm like, well, he's back on? Oh, oh yeah. Actually, um, we, so, we only yeah. missed one day. My contract got canceled on oh. a Thursday. <laughs> I took Friday off to think about it, and we went live on that Saturday, and we've basically been on five days a week since then. Yeah, I've been going weeks about listening to you, so... Man, thank God you're back on. Um, so, Colin, um, it's actually for my mother. Uh, she's on a thyroid medication, and thank you for the statin uh, information. She completely got off that. I had her listening to that, and so she's no longer taking the statin. Good. Uh, but now the doctor has her on um, thyroid medication. What's your thought on that? Well, it's not that simple. Um, we'd have to know what thyroid medication and why, but I can generalize and say that the traditional medical system, like with most things, they treat thyroid completely wrong. They don't run the right tests. They don't okay. look at the right numbers. And then their only answer are drugs. Now, there are some cases yeah. where people have lost their entire thyroid, they've had thyroid cancer, they've had other issues, and that those thyroid hormones in that case do need to be replaced. Um, and sometimes it does require medication, but there are always other options we can explore. But my guess is that, uh, do you remember why she, what, what her symptoms were, why she was prescribed the thyroid medication in the first place? Um, I believe it was because um, uh, what's that uh, thing in your body that uh, met metabolism? I, I think it was because of that. Um, I think about just having to do a nutri would probably be the best bet, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then we'll see. Okay. And, and in the nutri we ask some very specific questions about symptoms that will let us know, is, it, is her thyroid overactive, underactive, um, we will ask, you know, what medication she's on. Uh, and I can tell you, it, it's probably not being treated correctly. Yeah, and, and I agree. I mean, um, I, I agree because her doctor, I don't, I don't agree with half the things they put her on. So, yeah, the, so. the fact okay. that the, well, um, I'll have do. the fact that we even say half the I'm, things they put her on. Uh, that's that's the typical case anymore. By the time you get to 50, you're on multiple medications for the rest of your life. And it, as it turns out, most of them are never necessary. Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, awesome. Well, thank you for your advice. I'll have her do that NutriQ and then uh, go from there. You're welcome. Yeah, and when she does the NutriQ, she can uh, request a free 10-minute discovery call. Uh, Lauren is excellent at those. In fact, uh, I tried to do it this week. I still have a lot going on being on the road still, but uh, I, I want to do a new show, Lauren and I, where we um, review some discovery calls in one-on-one -on -one so people get more familiar with that process and see how we are really, really able to dig much deeper and help even more than I'm able to on the show, where I have a couple minutes, I don't necessarily have time. I, I don't have time to do background on somebody before they call the show. The beauty of the discovery call, even though it's 10 minutes, um, Lauren puts anywhere from 30 to uh, 60 minutes at least into those discovery calls, looking at the NutriQ, uh, 
uh, looking at the medications, looking at the symptoms, and coming up with a plan. So it's a 10-minute call with most of the time about an hour of work behind it. And if we can't solve your problem on a discovery call, then we could do a one-on-one. So we, we do have a show in the works. I have to finish up some planning on it, and then I've got to get with Lauren, where we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do a show. Not sure if we'll, we'll take calls yet or not. We're going to play around with that a little bit. Not sure. Um, some people, maybe we, they would like to come on and join the show if we did their discovery call or their one-on-one. But even if they don't, we could just take the information and walk through the whole process and show the results because it is pretty incredible. If you haven't done a NutriQ and a discovery call, you should go do it. They're free. Uh, and we, we will give you a 30-day plan to address what we consider to be your number one problem. We'll look over the NutriQ, we'll look at your medications, we'll look at supplements, we'll look at symptoms, and then we'll say your biggest health issue is X, might be blood sugar control, might be immune system, it might be digestive, whatever it is, we'll give you a 30-day plan if it's weight loss. And if we determine that's the first thing you should be doing, well, then we'll give you a 30-day plan to address that. Let's go to... Texas this time. Randy, welcome to the program. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? Doing good. What's so, on your mind today? I know you and I are both, well, you and I are both big gardeners and now, you know, I've gone carnivore about the same pace as you have and now I'm in a quandary as what to do with my gardens. Well, I know it's kind of a weird thing. I've got this <laughs> giant garden that puts out tons of food yeah. and I'm not eating, but Here's the other thing. Remember, I'm doing fermented carnivore. So I'm actually yeah, looking yeah. forward to the garden this year. I'm going to ferment everything. I'm going to ferment salsa. I'm going to ferment asparagus. I'm going to do 10 different ways to ferment cabbage. Uh, I'm going to do my fermented hot sauce from all of my jalapenos and hot peppers that I grow. Right, uh, right, I'm right. Gonna, yeah, so it still definitely has value. It really does. I'm going to ferment cherry tomatoes because those are awesome when you ferment them. I mean, most vegetables are. So I, I'm actually looking forward to it. Yeah. And then, you know, here's the other beauty. I love what comes out of the garden, absolutely. And, and I have way more than we'll be able to use again, I'm sure. But uh, I love giving it away. Give it to the food bank, give it to neighbors, you know, get people interested in real homegrown food and share it with them. Um, But I also love just the gardening itself. I I actually said if I didn't eat a thing out of my garden, I would probably still grow it and give it all away. Because I I just love being out there. And and I know that the health benefits of being out there all day long in the fresh air, the sunshine, digging in the dirt. There's so many good benefits. And honestly, my stress levels go down. The day just flies by. So yeah, it's very, it's very therapeutic, very mindful. It is. Yeah, absolutely. And I I just think that uh, even if I gave away everything I grew, I would probably still keep doing it. But I'm really excited about uh, all the fermenting I'm going to do this year out of the garden. Right, right. And have you, I was just wondering how far away are you from shopping for pasture land to where you can grow your own meat <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> I you, uh, i'm right th- i am right there i know it would uh you know i'm actually considering i just sent uh i just sent joel salatin an email this morning i i got thinking you know i'm only about uh five hours away from him right now and it it doesn't even oh, really, are you? Okay. yeah, and it really doesn't even take me a full five hours out of my route. If if I if I were to head over his way, it would just add a day to my trip going home. Oh yeah. Um, and since yeah, I'm this he, close, yeah, I, I live I live about right. I live about an hour and a half from him. Oh, do you really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really, if he, I sent him an email just to make sure he's going to be in town this week and this weekend. And if he is, I'm going to head down there and and see him. Uh, it, was, which which would probably listening. really give me the bug to raise some animals. Oh, it would. It would. Yep, yep, very much so. But um, he had said, I was listening to his podcast, and his latest podcast, he mentioned that he's had, just in the recent couple of months, you know, four different billionaires, not millionaires, but billionaires, 
seek his counsel on buying land. Really? That's getting scary. Yeah. That is getting really it is, scary. It is. Wow. You know, and trends, you know, trends follow what the wealthy do. The wealthy do it first, and then it trickles down from there. And, you know, it's scary yeah. to think of what premium property, premium ag land might start selling for. Yeah, you know, you know when you I, your Bill Gates and I, your other people I, buying it by the thousands of acres. And, and I hate to be so negative and pessimistic, but I have a feeling they're not looking to buy land to turn it into regenerative farms. They're looking to secure it, I think, and control it. I control think they're just to, to control seems, and lock it down. Yes, it, control seems to be the word of the. Uh, our, our current times it, it seems like that there are an awful lot of people that want to control things yeah yeah and i know that like i don't know the the, the ultra wealthy they've got a different agenda but i know that for some reason north carolina is very regenerative farm heavy it's a, it's a hotbed for it that's good and there are there are lots of farms in north carolina that are funded by the ultra wealthy and you know, they are off just off the charts in what they're doing. Everything is picture perfect. Everything is, you know, formatted Joe Salatin style. And you know, there's, there has been no money spared in developing these farms that they're then paying other people to run. Interesting. You know, so, so they, they see a value in it. Yeah. Huh? Interesting. I wonder, you know, I, I've, I've talked about this. If you look at what's happening with food prices, which is really scary. Holy cow. Um, I, you know, I normally don't pay attention to prices when I grocery shop. And it's not like I just have money no, to no, burn, I but I, I'm not going to buy my food based on the price of it. I, I'm going to buy my food, right, and I'm going right. to get the best quality I can possibly get. And once I know I'm ordering the best quality food I can get, I really don't pay attention to the price. If I have to, I'll cut out something else in my life if I have to to afford it. And I, I was just shopping. I, I'm kind of not completely out of my own meat, but I'm starting to run kind of low. So I thought, well, I'll just yeah. go, you know, I, I use Instacart while I'm on the road. I'll just go order. And I started putting meat in the cart, and I'm looking at the prices. I am shocked at what meat <laughs> costs right now. It is insane. I know it's yeah, been all well, over the news, but it, it know, didn't really click till I started looking at buying some of it. Right. What, what's made me nervous is I haven't, I haven't bought meat out of a grocery store in years. I've got... I've got a local farmer that I buy, I buy a cow at a time from him. Every, every spring I buy a cow from him. I get it slaughtered, you know, and I fill my freezer. Well, this is the first year that I don't know that that's going to be available. I, you know, I don't know if he has changed things or the, for whatever reason, but he's, he's kind of ghosted me. Oh, that's and interesting. I'm a, little, I'm a little nervous. Yeah. Now I, yeah, I will little, say little, that, we order, you know, super high quality meat from several sources, pork from one, beef from another, chicken from another. I get some local stuff. I try to spread the business around because I love supporting these kind of farms. And so far, right. no shortages whatsoever. I've been able to order everything I wanted. Prices have, haven't gone up. And the interesting thing is, and, and if I do head over to uh, Joel's place, if he's going to be around, I may ask him if he'll do a show with me while I'm there and talk about this because if there's anybody in the planet that understands all of this, it's going to be Joel. But when you look at oh yeah yeah because he why, definitely has his finger on the pulse yeah if you look at why we have shortages, why we prices are going through the roof, when you look at traditional um, raising of animals, one it's it's um, it's supply intense. They have to buy all of the feed. 
I mean, it, that's why it's not regenerative. They they buy everything. They buy fertilizers. They bring yeah. in all their feed. All the cost of all that stuff has gone through the roof. They feed them a ton of grains. Well, like 30 or 40 percent of the world's grain comes from um, Russia and Ukraine. Well, there's a problem. So grain prices have gone through the roof. So feed prices have gone through the roof. A ton of fertilizer, for some reason, comes out of Ukraine. Fertilizer prices have gone through the roof. Right. Well, and the bulk of America's cropland is designated to dog food and biodiesel. Uh, Yeah. You know, there's only like, what, 10 10 or 11 percent of the food that's grown in America America. Yeah, that's insane. But now you look at these regenerative farms. Oh, and and you know these giant, you know, uh, I don't know, factory farms use a ton of fuel. Diesel's gone through the roof. Um, oh, it's a tremendous amount. Yes, they're they're more labor intensive. Labor costs have gone through the roof, and you can't find people to work. Now we look at these small. They tend to be family-run regenerative farms. They don't have the same kind of labor issues because they the family all tends to work there. They don't use a lot of diesel. They don't use any grains or fertilizers. They they regenerate all of their own stuff. They don't have a lot of inputs. So their their right. operations haven't changed much. Well, and I think that these shortages, and especially the diesel fuel prices, are going to force a lot of people, a lot of a lot of the big farmers because their profit margin is so minimal that they can't afford a spike in anything. No. And you know, so I think it's going to force their hand to change practices. And and what happens when it, it's not just a spike in one thing, it's a spike in all three of the things a, they use a, a lot of. Yes. Yes. And I have noticed, you know, driving across the country these past few years there has been a, a, a bigger, bigger, bigger push towards, and I don't know whether it's out of necessity or just acknowledging that it's better, but I see more fields planted in cover crops and less tillage and less less soil being turned. That's a good thing to see. And it is. It is. I still see. I'm down in South Texas right now, and I see fields that are just beautifully green and you know spr- springtime is coming in and everything's green enough the grasses are green enough they're wonderful and across the highway is a, a tilled and cultivated field the dust is just blowing off of it in sheets yeah exactly and it, i don't understand what you know what what is this farmer over here not seeing yeah. what what part of it does he not get you know, the, the, the phrase that probably explains it better than anything else is the phrase that I absolutely hate every time I hear it. Well, this is the way we've always done it. We've always done it. Yes. yes. I hate it. Hate I, it, hate it, hate it. It makes me and crazy. it's such an ignorant mentality. Yeah. Yep. It's yeah. We've always done it. Now, Just ignorant. You know, most home gardeners don't do it. I, I don't. I don't know that I've ever seen a home garden. I'm sure some do. I've just never known anybody. But this was my first year. I planted cover crops last fall, and it's beautiful. It's this long, green, yeah. lush stuff that covers all the ground. And I'm thinking, wow, what and the a ground is absolutely gorgeous when you it, dig down into it. It is, and the the dirt is just like chocolate cake. It's just like this amazing texture and it just keeps getting better and better and things grow better. The whole cover crop thing, I I threw down like a, an eight seed blend and it just grew. It's so lush and bright green. It's just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's really amazing. And it's, and it's so cost effective Yeah, on a small scale, on a large scale. It is cost effective. Yeah, I bought like. I mean, uh, yeah, you're spending some money on just. I bought like a fifty pound okay. bag of this seed mix, and it wasn't that expensive right. at all, and it goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. Just go to your local ag supply and just buy some plot plot food for deer. Okay. You know, it's got. Yeah, it's got all kinds. Yeah, and you know, depending on what you're shopping for, it'll have all kinds of legumes and yep. different grains and all your forbs that you know there there could be anywhere from 8 to 50 different things in that deer in that 
wildlife plot mix. That's an interesting idea. Um, yeah, I I found a, not, a, not 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 necess- Yeah, you you don't necessarily all want it in your garden because some of it will be aggressive perennials once established. So. Yeah, I was so careful about that. I, where you where you put it? I found a blend that was specifically designed for the Northwest, and it was designed for okay. you know true cover crops. So there's nothing in there that kind of takes over. But they, they, you know, one of them, a couple of them are like legumes that actually you know fix some nitrogen in the soil. Some of them have you know deeper yeah. root systems, so they keep the the ground aerated nice. And so it was they, somebody put a lot of thought into it, and it looked like it made a lot of sense. And I thought, well, I'm going to try that, and it's. It's just incredible. Yeah, there's there's getting to be a lot more. You know, you see a lot more different mixes on the market now. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of choice, a lot of options. Good stuff. All right. Well, good talking to you. Glad you're back. I just I just realized just a little while ago that you were back on the air. You know, when when they canceled you, I canceled them. Just out of just out of spite. <laughs> When, when your show went off the air, I called up Sirius XM and shut them off. Yeah, and, I, I, you, I, know. I, you know, I, I certainly do appreciate that support. I actually, the first letter I put out, I put out a letter the day after it happened, and I actually said, look, I, I'm not asking for that. I, I, I have no intention of retaliating against them, you know, bad mouthing them. I don't want any big campaign to, to try to punish them. You know, it's their platform. They can choose what they want on there or not, and honestly, in the long run, right. even in the short run, I mean, it's only it hasn't even been two months yet. Um, I, I'm you're going to be better off where you're at, and I and I like now that your shows are archived, and I can listen to them. I can go back and listen to them, and I can get them to other people that need to hear stuff. There you go. There you go. No commercials, you know, which I absolutely love, yeah. and, um, and and I'm happier. And, and I hate right, and I hate just I I, I hate trying to paraphrase what I've heard you say <laughs> and explain it to somebody else. Yeah, I know. I, you know, it just doesn't come across right. I would much rather just find a link to an archived episode and say, here, listen to this. Well, the um, our, our programming team is building everything from the ground up, and I think we're getting ready to release kind of a roadmap of features and things we're working on. But we plan on building the absolute best podcasting platform on the market it may even become another business model for us we may end up uh um selling our platform yeah even just opening up you know well what it is you know joe rogan went to spotify and somebody else went to rumble and somebody else went here and somebody else went there and you know and choice Exactly. And we looked at all of those and we pulled and, you know, we had our podcast network back in 2014. We started podcasting in 2007 here and there. So between the radio and the podcast, we've got a lot of experience in this. And and I apply the same philosophy to this that I do everything else. How do we make this better? You know, and, and we looked at all those platforms and everybody's missing some pieces. And we said, well, you know what? Let's build our own. Let's reinvent the wheel because I think we can. No, I know we can do a better job. We're we're already seeing it. So we have some really really cool features we're working on that don't exist anywhere in podcasting yet. Oh, that'd be great. So, all right. Well, glad to have you back, and I'll let you get on to another caller. And good talking to you. Well, great talking to you. Great to have you back in the tribe. Let's go to Texas. Paul, welcome to the program. Howdy. What's on your mind today? Howdy. Uh, lots of things now, but I didn't cancel my Sirius XM because there is other good channels besides Road Dog, which is not as good as it used to be, in you, my opinion. So, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I haven't really said this because a lot of people did cancel on my account. Like I said, I didn't ask for it, and I, but people made their own decision, which is how it should be. Um I didn't cancel my account. I I still use it. I, there there yeah. shows on there I really enjoy and like, and I can't get any place else. So, um, you know, again, I I loved the support, yeah, well, I, but uh, I didn't cancel. Yeah, you know, I, I I just don't like like if I want, if I decide I want to listen to music or whatever, 
I don't want to have the channel but, surf all day. Oh, that yeah, station ran out. So, you know, a lot yeah. of people did say that the reason they canceled wasn't so much to spite or punish them. That they said it was really the only show they were listening to. It, well, then that makes sense. Oh, okay. I mean, if you're spending all that money and you're not yep. really listening to it a lot, you're only listening to a show or two, well, then maybe it does make sense to quit and go go podcast instead. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, I like beetroot or pickled beets, but I'm thinking I should start fermenting them, but I'm not yep. 100% sure. I've started eating more f- I've been well, eating fermented pickles and beet kraut, but well, yep. Stop. I'm st- thinking I can probably do this myself. So. Stop thinking about it and just do it. Fermented beets are so much better than just plain pickled beets. It's not even close. Should I just cut them up into cubes, or what's going to be the best way to do it? There's all kinds of ways. Um, if, if if you want to, you can even mix and match. You could add, sometimes I'll add shredded beets to other ferments. Like I'll add shredded beets with shredded cabbage and, and do a ferment of that. Yeah. You can cube the beets and, and ferment them like that. You could, there's all kinds of options. And don't forget, drink the brine. That, that's basically beet kvass. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a. There's a ton of nutrients in the in the brine itself. I would just play around with with different preparation methods and see what you like best. So what's the what's the ratio of salt to water? Is it two, two tablespoons or? Yep, two tablespoons to a quart. Two tablespoons, a quart of water, and that's it. So yeah. do I put the do I put the beets? In the jar first, and then fill it up with water, or put the water in, and then, or doesn't matter. It does matter because what happens if you fill up the jar? How do you know how much water to put in if you put the water in first? Because if you yeah, fill well, up the jar, then when you start putting in beets, it all overflows. Yeah, so yeah, I always pack my vegetables in, and and I play around with them too. I'll get in there and rearrange things, and and I want to get as much into that jar as I can. And then you just fill in with the brine. So what I do when I'm getting ready to ferment, depending on how much I have to ferment, I'll make a big batch of my brine. I might make a gallon or two of brine because it's easy and it's cheap. It's water and salt. So I'll make a big, you know, pitcher full of it, something that pours really easy. Then I'll set that aside and then I'll I'll start packing all my jars, and then I just come down the line and fill all my jars with the brine, put the lids on, and you're done. Okay, I'm going to give this a shot. So good. I've started eating uh, fermented pickles, and I've been buying some beet kraut as well. So awesome. Um, because I, I went I went for my DOT physical last week, which turned out to be really annoying. So, I got to Concentra Medical at 10 a.m. in the morning, and she says, it'll probably be an hour and a half before we get to you. So, if you want to go to a restaurant or go do something, that's fine, but keep your phone on and don't be more than about five minutes away, so when we call you. Okay. So, at one o'clock, when I was being back there for about an hour, I went up and I said, so where am I on the list? And she says, oh, you're next. So at about 20 to 2, they called me in, you know, how much do you weigh, height, eye test, all that good stuff, be in a cup. And then she said, she disappeared to test it, and she comes back and she said, are you a diabetic? I said, not that I'm aware of, no. Did you and have she ketones? Said, well, there's sugar in your urine. Oh, sugar, really? I don't know. She said there was sugar in it. And she said, Have you eaten today? I said, You have fried potato, bacon and egg for breakfast. I'd actually had Kentucky fried chicken and mashed potato and gravy and a bowl of ice cream the night before. And she said, We'll have to finger stick you. Oh, okay. So I held on my finger and she stabbed it and it was 94. Oh, no, you're good. Yeah, well, 94 is just fine. But, she didn't write that. She didn't write record that that she finger stuck me and the reading. So uh, then, 
I complete the physical. Oh, and then when she just, she took my blood pressure, sitting on the bed, feet dangling in the air, talking to me, takes my blood pressure, and she says, do you have high blood pressure? And I said, I only want to come to see you people. Exactly. Well, it was 150 over 90. It, yeah. Uh, 150 over 90. And I said, come back in 10 minutes. It'll be fine. So 22 minutes later, some other woman sticks her head in there. Are you doing all right in here? Yeah, just waiting. Oh, did someone take your blood pressure? No, not yet. <laughs> so she says, I'll do that. <laughs> so she took it. Well, I grabbed the footstool and put my, I was sitting on the bed stool, but Good. I put my feet on the stool. Good. And she took it. Oh, look at that. You're 130 over 80. And she said, that's good. So then 3.30 in the afternoon, I finally leave Concentra. The next day I go to the DMV and attach it to my license. And then that afternoon, the company I'm leased to, the safety lady calls me. Oh, you're, uh, you have a problem with your medical. What's that? Well, the MRO, he kicked your medical out because you have sugar in your urine. Oh. And she said, they didn't finger stick you or record it or anything. I said, they did finger stick me, and it was 94. And they said it was good. So carry on. And she said, well, you're going to have to go back to them and get it sorted out. Oh. So the next day, I go back there, told them what had happened. Oh, okay, yeah. And so they pulled out the original record and looked at it. Oh, yeah, we did finger stick it. So they... They rewrote it up and everything, and she said, you're all good. Have a nice day. You're, it's all taken care of. So yeah. then I called the company I'm leased to, told them I, I had. And actually, the woman at the counter, when I said the MRO had kicked my physical out, she said, what's the MRO? Who's that? She did not know, and it's like, geez. So <laughs> eventually I got it straightened out, but uh, talk about. I guarantee my blood pressure was up that day. Oh, for yeah. Real. And, <laughs> and let's think about this. You could teach a first-year nursing student to do a good DOT physical. They're not that complicated. Yep. Yeah, well, it was for this woman. But, I guess. Yeah. What, uh, unbelievable. And, you no, know, do these but, people uh, not realize your, your entire business and livelihood depends on this? Yeah, well, I I lost. A, I, I was planning on leaving on that Thursday morning, go to work, and get two loads in, and be back at home Saturday night. Well, I couldn't go. The company I'm leased to, she said, "Don't you drive that truck?" So I unplugged the ELD and drove it into the repair shop to get some fixed. And what they don't know about, they won't worry about. So, there you go. But uh, I got my medical all straightened out, and then I left home on Friday morning, and I'll be back home tomorrow. And my week will be done, but it it cost me a day's work and uh, ruined what I'd I'd set it up to get home for Easter, and now that's all screwed up too. So unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. So all right, the well, joys of trucking. Start yeah. fermenting beets; your blood pressure will come down. Okay, good deal. There you I'm go. All right, good talking to you. Let's. Uh, oh, hey, I just uh, an email back from Joel. Oh boy. Um, how crazy is this? I just said to Joel, I'm, I'm nearby. I, I want to swing by, you know, maybe in the next couple of days or this weekend. And he said he's getting on a plane right now and he's going to, of all places, Oregon. So I'm here trying to see him. He's flying out to Oregon. But um, it does say uh, he's good for Monday. Uh not sure if I can hold out till Monday or not. I'll have to look at and see what's going on. Because I'd really, really love to swing by and see him. And it uh, sounds like he does want me to come by, but he's not going to be back till Monday. So we will see. See what uh, what might happen there. Let's go to California. Mike, welcome to the program. Hey, how you doing, Kevin? Good. What can I help you with today? Hey, um, I started uh, doing the uh, keto, and I was real strict with uh, just meat and vegetables the first week. Then I kind of, after that, I started adding some yogurt in, and I put just a few blueberries in that yogurt. And I just don't know um, if how to know if I'm in ketosis or not, or does it really even matter? Uh, it does matter. 
Um, the 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 state of ketosis does a lot of things in our body. It it is one of the things we're trying to achieve. With the, I, I will tell you, the more I stay in ketosis, the better I feel across the board. Um, uh-huh. I, I think better. I think clearer. I have more energy, fewer aches and pains. It just everything about being in ketosis agrees with me. So I I do try to stay in ketosis, and I I can tell without testing. I haven't tested ketones at all on this trip because I didn't bring anything with me. Um, so when sure. did you, when did you switch your diet? Uh, three, this is my third week this week. Okay. Have you noticed any I physical talked changes? You, I talked, oh yeah. Um, I talked to you, um, recently, I think in the last couple of weeks, twice. And, um, my, I had aches and pains in my hands really bad. Oh, I remember. All that went away yep. within a day. I remember now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's huge. That is And then huge. my feet don't hurt either on the, on the hardwood floor. So yeah. Which is awesome. Anymore. Yeah. So now that yeah. can happen just from eliminating the grains. You don't necessarily have to be in ketosis okay. to get the pains to go away. That's a good sign, no doubt. And it feels good. Okay. Um, here are the things I usually notice that, that let me know that I'm in ketosis. Um, one, my okay. hunger tends to go way down. I don't have much of an appetite when I'm in ketosis. I usually only eat one big meal a day and, you know, nibble a little bit here and there. But it, it, if I go all day without thinking about eating, some days I'll go all day without eating. Uh, it happened here the other day. I was at Pittsburgh Power. I was doing the show. We had a lot of stuff going on. I walked right out of the show, went in the garage, started working on the coach. Then I was doing some stuff with Bruce. And at the end of the day, I thought, I'm kind of hungry. I wonder why. And then I realized, well, you're hungry because you haven't eaten anything today. Uh, so your appetite yeah. tends to really diminish or, or even go away. Energy levels tend to go through the roof. I, I, at the end of the day, no matter how busy I've been, I still have the same energy level I had when I woke up. That That's another pretty good indicator. And then even if you're not weighing yourself, weight loss is a big indicator. Most people, when they're in ketosis, if they have weight to lose, they're losing about a pound a day. I, I don't really have much weight to lose anymore, so... I, I, I don't see weight loss as an issue. But even if you don't weigh yourself, people go, sheesh, within three or four days, my pants were loose. My clothes were fitting different. Yeah. You there? Huh. Yeah. yeah. Just for a second, I think it was gone. Okay. Yeah. So, and then um, th- there's another one that some people don't usually realize it's part of ketosis. There, there is a downside to it. It's called keto breath. Because there are there are three uh-huh. there are three different forms of ketones in our body. One of them is actually acetone, and acetone will actually come out in your breath. So I tend to get this weird kind of funky taste in my mouth, and and you know I start you know sucking on mints, so I'm not you know knocking people out when I'm talking to them. But keto breath, when you're deep into ketosis, that's another sign. Maybe I'm not. Now, you don't have to get all of those. Are you, are you having any of those? Um, well, so I can I can typically, even when I'm not on this, uh, this food diet, um, I can usually a lot of times go without eating, and, especially if I'm busy and not think much about it. Um, but I usually will do the NDK coffee. And it seems like it's almost, and I don't, I don't watch the clock, but I'm sitting here driving and all of a sudden I'll be like, wow, I'm hungry. And I'll look down and it'll be like 12, 1202. I mean, it's almost to the minute. Okay. And, uh, then I will, then I will end up eating something. Um, but it seems like I'm uh, most of the day and I've thought to myself, I don't feel as hungry as I usually do, like throughout the day, but okay. I just have peaks of hunger. Does yeah. that make more sense? Or it can, okay. yeah, because it, your body still wants nutrition. And I tell people, look, no matter whether you're in ketosis or not, if you're hungry, eat. 
eat. Don't don't ever think yeah. that not eating will make this process work better because it doesn't unless you're fasting and that's a totally different situation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if, if you're getting good results, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, your level of ketosis. If you're curious or you're not sure, okay. uh, you could always get the meter and check. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know with put, putting those uh, blueberries in my yogurt, is, is, that uh, o- is it okay? Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah, berries okay. berries are just I just fine. didn't want it to like knock me completely out. It, it shouldn't. Um not at all. Okay. Um so I, I wouldn't worry too much about okay. that. And I really don't even get on the scale cuz I'm you know, I'm home once a week. Yeah. And uh I I did check at first, but I was like I just, you know, I just don't really care that much. Yeah, I could I could lose some weight, but you know, do I really need to? Well, then you you may not. You know, when we get down to our our natural weight, you know, people sometimes would ask me, you know, I'm I'm actually underweight. I I don't want to lose any more weight, but I hear about all these other benefits about being in ketosis. I'll feel so good. And I'll say, well, don't worry about it. You're not going to lose any more weight. It it doesn't, you don't keep losing weight. I mean, you could stay in ketosis for three years. And at some point, you get to the point where your body weight is normalized, and that's just where it's going to stay. Okay. And I've been I've been at this weight for I, I don't know, uh, geez, probably twenty years. Oh yeah, yeah. Weight loss may not be you know? may not be a part of this for you, but look for the other things: the energy levels, okay. the appetite, the you know clear thinking. Those are usually pretty good indicators. And and again, if you're if you're concerned and you okay. just want to know or you're curious, get the meter. They're thirty or forty bucks, and just check. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, one other thing is, and this this has nothing to do with the, the food that I'm eating, but I'd say two months ago, and I really didn't put all this together, but so I don't know if I have a hernia or what, but it's almost. Uh, below my um, belt line or right at my belt line and down all the way across. And when I, when I go and do anything like walk around, pick up some boards, you know, uh, just throw some stuff around a little bit, it really starts acting up and my legs will get really weak. Could be a hernia. Okay. It's pretty easy to check for it. I'm going to go in on Monday. It is. Yeah, it's pretty easy to check. Okay. That's the whole, uh, you know, when the doctor reaches down there and grabs and says cough. Uh, that's what they're looking for, a hernia. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my legs, the first time I noticed, it, there was none of that part, but my legs would get real weak. And yeah, I was but, like, well, that's weird, because I was putting up chicken stents all day, getting up and down. And at the end, I was like, I grabbed the tree limb, picked you know, to stand up. And I was like, man, that's weird. Huh. And I was like, well, I was working all day, but yeah. I've never been like that before. And so then it, it was a big span in between. And then I noticed that again. And I was like, huh. And then my stomach started kind of going along with that. Yeah. So I was it, like, it, it'd be okay. worth getting it checked. Yeah. 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 That's what I kind of figured. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks for the call. Let's go to North Carolina this time. John, welcome to the program. Hey, good morning, Kevin. Quick question for you. A couple months ago, I've noticed that kind of a itchy tingling in my wrist, and it kind of goes down to my thumb, and it's off and on throughout the day. Hey, could that be any kind of – I'm pretty much 90% carnivore and no other issues or anything, but could that be a mineral imbalance of some sort? Uh, the itching, probably not. Um, I'm not aware of any mineral deficiencies that would cause itching. Um, but it's a tingling almost like my thumb's asleep or something. But then on the surface, just right in there above the thumb towards the wrist and the little bone right there, it feels good if I scratch it. There's no rash or nothing on the skin, nothing like that. Huh. Well, this is one of those weird little things that's sometimes really hard to track down. It Does it feel like this is almost like nerve 
tingling kind of stuff like your hand or your it's almost like falling asleep that kind of pins and needles feeling yes yeah, almost exactly and i'm wondering I, I don't recall it and i know how nerves you could in you know do something to your back and it could show up in well, your hand i, I, I mean it's, it's well, all my, over the place my next question was going to be do you have a chiropractor I, I do i haven't been to him in quite a while because i feel so <laughs> my my left hip, you know, all the lifting and stuff I do, sometimes it'll act up, so maybe I'll go see him. You know, I, I was just talking to somebody else the other day, and, uh, well, actually, I was talking to my sister-in-law, and it was kind of funny. She said, well, I was at their house for a while, and, and she said, uh, I have to go to my chiropractor this afternoon. And I said, oh, who do you go to? And turns out she goes to the same chiropractor I was going to back when I was in high school, living there. Uh, and we went, oh, wow. to, yeah, we went to high school with him. He's a, a great chiropractor. Um, but I, and I got saying, you know, I haven't been to my chiropractor in years because I don't really need to anymore. I used to go all the time. My neck was always hurting some, I was getting headaches. So, you know, I, I used to go to my chiropractor quite a bit and, and loved what they did, but I, I just don't need it anymore. But at any time I think, you know, if I feel yeah, I kind of, yeah, if something is, is nerve related, I'll usually start with them. Okay. All right. Yeah. I have full function in my hand and everything. It's just kind of odd and I won't have it for a few days and yeah, that it is... couldn't be anything I've been eating more cheese, but I don't think anything like that. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. It's usually that we don't get food reactions like that. This sounds more like a uh, kind of a biomechanical kind of issue, I think. Okay, I'll set an appointment and let him know. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for the call. Let's go to Arkansas. John, welcome to the program. Hey, Kevin. How you doing? Good. What's on your mind hey, So today? I talked to you. I talked. I talked to you on Thursday. Uh, I told you I went in to uh, do my physical. Yeah. And my blood pressure had come out as 172 over 106. Right. I remember. And you had told me to go to CVS and get a, get a cuff, which I did. Well, uh, so, yeah, so I got the cuff from CVS, and my blood pressure readings were averaging around 195 over 130. Ouch. With that cuff. Yeah. So on Sunday, I decided I'm just going to cut all salt from my diet. That's a bad idea. And do, uh, uh, what, hold, don't do that. Don't do that. Even if it brings your blood pressure down, that's not a good idea. That That's a Band-Aid fix. Your body needs a lot of salt. The idea that we should take away salt to lower blood pressure is not addressing the root cause of your high blood pressure and will cause more problems. So even if I haven't heard whether it worked yet or not, it probably did. Taking salt out of your diet will lower your blood pressure, but it's not a good way to approach it. Yeah, it's down to 150 over 90. Yeah, it's not a... Now, for now, keep it there because I'd rather see you keep your blood pressure down because high blood pressure is dangerous. What I really think you should do, either do a one-on-one with us or find a good functional medicine doctor. You you don't want to do this by limiting salt in your diet. All right. My question, though, was, do you think there's really a big difference between, like, the CVS cup. Well, there, there, and what they use, that I get the doctor's office. There is some uh, difference, but not not the kind of numbers we're talking about. You know, if if you had the cuff and you were seeing one forty over ninety five, well, maybe there's a little bit of a discrepancy in there. But we, no, when you start seeing numbers like one ninety over one hundred plus, that that is a real blood pressure issue, and it should be taken seriously. Mm-hmm. And and you know, dropping the salt temporarily to bring it down, not a big deal. But that's not the answer. That that's a band aid. That's a fix. Um, when you do go back to eating salt, you know, make it good quality salt. Stay away from all the processed food that has all the garbage salt in it. But uh, I salt food heavily. Yeah. I put basically three forms of salt in my coffee every morning. 
the light balance is just three different forms of salts, basically. Um, salt is not bad for us. We should not be limiting it. Um, it should be a really good part of a good, clean diet. But we do have to figure out what's going on with that blood pressure. I agree. Yeah, it was, but I, you know, I, just, I was actually planning on not even adding salt back into my diet. That's uh, a you know, bad, like bad idea. Week, that's a, know, that's a bad or, idea. Salt is good for us. Salt is not right. the enemy here. If you want to, if you you know want to take a, uh, um, it, or if you want to read more about it, there's a good book called The Salt Fix. The Salt Fix. Okay, I'll look that up. Yeah, check that out and read right. it, yeah, and, and you'll find out that it. that the whole idea behind. Um, you know, limiting salt to fix blood pressure is just a really bad idea. It doesn't work. Well, it, it can work for the blood pressure, but it doesn't work for overall health. It's not the correct fix. It's not addressing the root cause. I mean, I can tell you, I eat a ton of salt, and my blood pressure is completely normal. Now, for another... Yeah, and that's what I was doing. And- for, for another fix, that this could be a mineral imbalance. It could be a, a nutrient deficiency. Um, I would actually recommend adding light balance every day and Cardio Miracle. Yeah, I just ordered uh, the Cardio Miracle. You had told me about it on Thursday, and it's sitting in my house. Good. So as soon as I get back home this weekend, I'm going to start taking that. Good. Okay. Yeah, that and, that's uh, a that's a I'm much better to way to away from this. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay away from uh, blood pressure medicine. Absolutely, uh, you know, my brother's on blood pressure medicine, and uh, you know, a certain part of his body doesn't work anymore. Yeah, Cardio Miracle has been so, our our best solution to this by far. Nothing else even comes close. Alrighty. All right. Well, I appreciate the the help you've given me. You're welcome. Stay on top of this, though. And it sounds like you are. Don't ignore this. This is a this is an issue. It needs to be addressed. You keep checking your own. Also, work on those stress levels. And now finding out that you've got this medical issue adds more stress. So you got to work on some of those stress issues I talked about. Cold showers, the cold exposure, uh, is a great way to do this. And it doesn't cost anything. Let's go to Georgia. Matt, welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Kevin. What's on your mind today? Um, well, I don't know if this belongs on a health show, but yesterday morning I kind of had a pain in my lower stomach. I was feeling woozy. And it started when I opened an email from my CPA. <laughs> <laughs> my now, that, that is definitely <laughs> health related because it's a stressful event <laughs> yes yes it was i was prepared for it but it uh it just you know it's like a punch in the gut <laughs> yeah you know my uh, uh my, my son michael sent me a text the other day and he said I can't believe the check. He had a great year last year on his own, and he said, I cannot believe the check I had to write to the government. And I said, yeah, welcome. Yep. I, it, it's just, you know, you <laughs> the amount of money you have to pay to the government, you think about what else you could do with that money, and it hurts to write that check. That it, You know, I've said it for years. Oh, Dave yeah. Ramsey said it for years. Other people have said it for years. If we want true tax reform in our country, we should take away pay, payroll withholding and make everybody write a check to the government for their taxes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it was either you know weekly with a paycheck or just monthly or even quarterly, whatever it is, had to physically yep. write the check and make the payment instead of it being withheld. Exactly. Check, yep. Yeah, 
there would be a lot of awareness. You know, if we were um, if we were sorry. going to force anything to be withheld, I'm not a fan of forcing anything to be withheld from anybody's check or forcing anybody. We're adults. We should be able to handle all this stuff ourselves. But if you wanted to change the system to improve people's life, make them pay their own taxes, but force them to withhold money for their 401k, that would be a better system. No. They call that the social security system. <laughs> We're going to get off on a tangent here. So yeah. yeah. I'll pull us back to the health side. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. Um, regenerative agriculture. Um, so the guy called, uh, first thing about the, uh, buying his whole beef and the farmer. For what I've noticed, I'm in a lot of regenerative agriculture groups and, and that type of stuff. Yeah. And my own personal experience with the guy I buy beef from, the butcher is the problem right now. They oh, are just okay. So overbooked. Some of them are over a year out. You had a cow. A year? Make, call them to make an appointment today. You're over a year out to get it in. What? Oh. I, yeah. I can't even get my head around that. Yeah. You, you can, and especially. You know, shorter life animals like pigs and and lambs and stuff like that. You got to be making appointments before they're ever even bred. Oh, oh! <laughs> Our country is falling apart. I I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. The, the more stories I hear like this, the more worried I get. Well, I mean, it's good and bad news. It's job security. It's, Oh, yeah. I don't know, you know, obviously that's not a glamorous job, but it's always in high demand. It certainly seems like it, but it, it's it's everywhere I go. You know, I'm trying to get parts for my coach. I can't get parts. Uh, I just sat through, uh, uh, they have a big staff meeting on Wednesdays at Pittsburgh Power, so I sat through it this morning, and it's all about we can't get parts, we don't have enough mechanics, we're months out on booking jobs. It's just Everywhere now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, um, we have a Jeep Grand Cherokee, as you know, and it's a diesel. The uh, three liter uh, Fiat motor, but um, the DPS sensor or uh, DEF, something going on that, and it's molded into the tank, so they got to replace the whole tank. And luckily, it's under warranty. That was three weeks ago they identified the problem. We're still waiting on the part. <sighs> it, it, it is just yeah. everywhere no with, with everything anymore. I, I just, uh, oh. you know, and I, I read an article this morning um, going back and comparing our current economy to what happened in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s under Carter. And uh, there was an interesting point in there that I, I didn't realize um, it, but it made a lot of sense as soon as I heard it. One of the things we have to make sure we do to keep the economy kind of balanced and humming along is that interest rates need to be at least as much as inflation. Well, hold on to your hats because inflation right now is running at 8.5%. If we, if the Fed yep. bumps up the, the yep. yep, if the Fed bumps up the interest rate to match that eight point five percent, you're going to be looking at twelve and thirteen percent mortgages again. Yeah, we just just matched nineteen eighty one for yep. for inflation. Yep, and it was a long, hard climb out of that time. Um, so yeah, the regenerative agriculture side, uh, and I wonder this too, you know, once you learn something, you wonder why everybody isn't doing it. <laughs> right. Uh, all I mentioned about, you're seeing more and more of it because it is gaining ground. Um, but it's a learning curve. Uh, one of the biggest thing about cover crops is the old mindset, you know, before we truly learned it all. That extra crop on there is using up moisture in the soil. So the old-time farmer, you know, they were worried about 
not having enough moisture in the soil, like especially in the drier areas, to actually grow a crop if you put a cover crop in. I mean, it, it, it's like eating fat will make you fat. It, it, it sounds good, it, right. but it's not true. Right, right. It's actually the opposite. The cover crops, the soil structure actually holds more moisture in the ground. Right. Um, so it's, it just takes time, and like he said, you know, it is growing. I see more and more of it. Uh, there's another podcast I listen to called um, the Field Work Podcast, and Gabe Brown is going to be on there this season from North Dakota. So he's, you know, really big into the cover crops and no-till, and it's uh, it, it's gaining ground, but it's slow. And it's a cost thing, too. People think it's going to cost more and your yields are down, but Gabe explained in his book, um, what was the name of that one, uh, Dirt to Soil, that actually your profit oh, yeah. margin goes up because your costs go down and yeah, your yields can slip a little bit the first couple of years, but after three years, they actually end up almost identical and sometimes even better. So yeah, that the oh, cost it- per acre goes down, but the, the revenue stays high. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I even noticed that in my little garden. To, to you know, to go to cover crops added a new cost. I wasn't buying that fifty-pound bag of seed before, um, and in the beginning, I you know brought in a lot more amendments to the soil. Now this year, this will be the first year I'm going to bring in almost nothing. I've been composting for a year now, so I, I've finally caught up. I have enough compost to go around. Um, I'm doing the cover crops, so they, they basically call cover crops green manure. Uh, it adds that much back to the soil and recovering my own seeds. So you're right. There's a huge learning curve here, but the, the deeper you get into it, the less and less money you spend. Yeah, that's the biology side of it instead of a. You know, being a biological farmer versus being a chemical farmer. Exactly. Just, uh, you know, certain, like, clovers, and I mean, there's a lot of different ones that are nitrogen-fixing. So by planting them, and this is all the different mixtures, uh, things like uh, the daikon radish and different types of radishes, you let them grow, they, they make a big hole in the ground, and then it freezes and rots over the winter. Well, that aerates the ground, yep. but then that rotting radish puts potassium back in the ground. Exactly. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, or phosphorus. I can't remember which one, but yeah. Uh, it, fo- it phosphorus might be right. Its own, yeah. Yeah, phosphorus. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's... It, 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 quite it, interesting, but... You know, when, time it, to learn. well, when you think about it, it seems like this miracle. Oh, my God, that's incredible that this does this and this does... All we're doing is mimicking nature. Yep. This is how nature works. And, Nobody you know, the, 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 the plains, you know, supported millions of bison and other animals for thousands of years. Nobody had to take care of that. Yeah, and that, that was then the, the next step of regenerative agriculture is the animals, especially the ruminants, you know, being on the land and chewing up the forage and then crapping it back out and 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 their yeah. hooves aerating the soil. It's actually and, amazing, yeah. The number of pounds of animal per acre that land can actually withstand is way more than people thought. Yeah, way the more. The biggest thing is the movement and the rest period in between. Right. Whereas a lot of ranches now, you know, they just pasture them until they're eating it right down to the dirt and there's nothing left. Yep. All of that that start killing plants versus moving them quickly and letting the plant come back. Have you ever seen, and and I've always, I I have to believe it's true, I've never done a a lot of research into it, but I've seen diagrams of where the natural prairie grasses and plants that grow, their roots go like feet deep. And the stuff that we now Uh, grow barely has any root system at all. Yeah, I remember reading somewhere some of the grasses actually grew like 60 feet deep. 
I, 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 I was going to say something, but it sounded so crazy to even say it. But, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah especially down the, the central part of the country, the Ogallaga, the reserve, the um, aquifer. Yeah. That, that they would actually grow roots deep enough to, to reach that so that before the dust bowl, before everything was plowed, that there really weren't that many droughts. Because right. the, the natural grasses that grew had deep enough roots that we could have a years long drought, but they were still it pulling matter. moisture up off the ground. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I've never the soil in place, so that the wind didn't affect. It. Yeah, I, I've never really, you know, verified all of that, but I've read about it. I saw it. It, it seems to make sense. But some of it, the reason I doubted it was because some of the numbers sounded crazy. What do you mean 60 feet roots or whatever the number was? That sounds impossible, but maybe not. You know, yeah, that, that, well, the fungus, uh, that, what is that, the biggest fungus is in Oregon there? Mycelium. And how many miles and miles? Is that all? Yeah, I can right. connect it. Yeah, the, uh, the, it's the, interesting. the really good book about that one was Mycelium Running. Yep. Yeah, that um, was a good one. Another good one kind of on history and all that with the soil. He's a little out there, but it's uh, the rocks don't lie. And that's the same guy that wrote another book. Uh, I, I'm not even going to think of his name right now, but um, The Hidden Half of Nature, I think, is another one of his books. Yeah, that one sounds familiar. I don't know if I've read that one or not. It sounds familiar. Yeah. Maybe somebody recommended There's it. There's some me. things he says in there that, yeah, we would disagree with, but it's, uh, you know... It's always interesting reading both sides, I think. Yeah, de- definitely. I, I, there are several books that I read and don't agree with everything. There are some doctors I agree with some of the things they do and not others. And, you know, it's the same with just about everybody. But you can usually learn something from all of these things. So, I didn't take any notes, so I can't remember I had other things, but. They're, they're lost in my mind somewhere now. So. There you go. All right. Well, uh, Go on along. We'll talk about them next time. Thanks for the call. Let's go to Iowa. Brandy, welcome to the program. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so just a few things. Uh, I think it was, her name was Nora. She was having kidney stones. I've had many. And uh, this is basically a tip I learned how to get rid of them out of your body. Uh, that basically you flood your bladder when they get down closer to where they're going to exit so that when they do come out, they're not poking and causing excruciating pain. Um, then this other one is going to sound like a stupid question. At least in my mind, it sounds stupid. Uh, listening, you know, I learn things from listening to your show. I don't know everything, but I'm still learning. When you do oil samples, and there was a couple of them that you couldn't figure out why those numbers were so high. So my idea is that since we're getting our oil from Russia and it's dirtier, could that affect it? And and it sort of was... Uh, and it was sort of also yesterday's call about the guy that was hauling detergent for the oil. It's like, is is that also sort of saying the same thing? No. And then the last thing was, what happened to George? George who? Well, he used to call your show a lot. I think he was in household, or he might have been in an auto hauler, um, but he's Last time we heard, he he had been vaccinated, and then he had gotten sick. And, um, you know, I recognize voices when I'm listening, and I just kind of wonder, what happened to him? You know, I, I recognize some voices, but every now and then I'll be shocked that somebody's a really regular caller, and I don't always catch that. I'm not, I don't remember who you might be referring to. Um, okay. Okay. Maybe somebody else will remember, and they'll give me a clue, or I'll think about it some more. 
Uh, let's go back to the oil. Now, sure. it, it doesn't matter okay. where, where the crude oil comes from, doesn't really matter. Now, there are different grades of oil. So, there, you know, you, you'll hear terms when they're talking about oil prices like light, sweet, crude, and, and that they're referring to yeah. different grades of oil. A lot of the oil that we pull out of the ground here, we don't necessarily use here. We export it because we maybe we maybe we have too much of that grade already and we can't really use that. Some oils won't get refined down to gasoline, some won't get refined to diesel. There's different uses, different grades, so it, it's not just straightforward. But all the oil manufacturers know what base oil they need to start with so when you say we're getting it from russia well yeah we we do get some oil from russia i don't know what grade that is i don't know what it's used for but we're not we wouldn't use an oil to uh, to we wouldn't use a base crude to create a motor oil that that isn't correct and all the oil coming out of the bottle we we've tested new oil the the oil starts clean it, no matter where it came from, it, it starts clean. It meets the right API classifications. So that's not the issue. The the dirt is and, and the contaminants are happening after it's put in that engine. Now, when he mentioned detergents, okay. all oils have to have detergents. If not, they wouldn't last long at all. I mean, they would become overwhelmed with dirt in no time. So when we talk about detergents and modifiers and friction modifiers and all these other components in oil, what we're talking about is the additive package. There are multiple additives that have to be put into oil to make them work in a specific engine. Now, you put different additives into oil if it's going into a gasoline engine. Use very different additives if it's going into a propane or a natural gas engine. Use another set of additives if it's going into a diesel engine. But all of that stuff is very tightly controlled, and that's what the API classifications are for. As long as I, I've said okay. that, you know, I, I honestly can't tell much difference between oils. If they meet the diesel API classifications for your engine, then it's going to be just fine. Okay. Well, I'm learning. Yep. There you <laughs> that's, go. Why, that's why I listen. And I, asking questions you. helps you learn even more. You're welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, speaking of that, since I've been hanging out with Bruce a lot the last two weeks, Bruce asks more questions than anybody I know. And it's why he's learned so much over the years. He, he's just curious about everything and anything. But he learns a lot that way. Let's see. Let's go to Georgia. Philip, welcome to the program. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Good. What's on your mind today? I'm just really glad to hear your voice again. I was, uh, I was really disappointed that day. I got that email. I was so bummed out that my wife asked me later in the day, she's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I was like, oh, man, Kevin got canceled. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. like, Captain Cup will have a backup plan, and he'll be up and running in a week. Get over it. it well, she's right. It only took us one day. One day. I was like, yeah, I mean, that's. That's that's one of your specialties, man. You knew it was coming. We 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 you, you did. We, we we could have been a little more prepared for it, but it's one of those things that we were kind of working on in the background, and it wasn't a huge priority. But you know, we we were like I said, I took a Friday off uh, just to think about things, and we kind of had to reactivate some of our old programs, and and we were going to go live Monday, and I said, you know what? I'm going to go live on Saturday. I, I don't just, just because I'm, I'm just going to, we're going to get on the air. We're going to make sure our voice doesn't, you know, disappear. We're just going to get on the air on Saturday. And for the most part, we've been on the air every day since. And I'm, I'm loving it. I'm having so much more fun. It's so much less stressful for me this way. No commercials. I think the calls are better. We don't have all the interruptions. I can stay on point and not lose my train of thought. I mean, how many times did you hear me come back from a commercial and forget what I was going to talk about? 
And that never happens. And we don't have to sit through commercials anymore. It's yeah. a dream come true. Yeah, we, we love it. We'll, we'll, uh, We'll figure out how to monetize this. That won't be a problem, but it's not going to be through commercials. Now, now there may be, when you're listening to our live stream, there may be some things at the beginning of an episode where we might talk about our product. So, you know, that would help us monetize things. But once the talk starts, we're not going to be interrupting it with commercials. Oh, man, that's awesome. I buy, I go to Let's Truck and buy stuff all the time just, just because... It's easy. Um, one of the, and one of the reasons I called, it's part of that reason. I, I uh, to make a long story short, my uncle passed away and he left me a cabin in the, in the mountains, uh, uh, Georgia mountains, LJ. And I've been going up there trying to fix it up. We're going to try to Airbnb it. But while I go up there, I can get, for some reason, I'm, I'm super healthy. I, I go mountain biking, I eat healthy. I don't eat any junk. It's like this. It's such a weird thing to me that I don't have the self control at my home that I have here. And I don't know what that is, but whatever it is, it's awesome. And I really want to want to take advantage of it. Good. So I'm ordering food online because there's no there's no Whole Foods here. There's no right right. You know, there's a there's a single, but um, but I don't. I, I guess that's probably the best way to do it is to just just order food online, don't you think? I, I, about ninety percent of my food now gets delivered. Yeah, I, I do very really? very little grocery shopping at the store anymore. Um, I, I have sources for meat. I have sources for pantry. I have sources for frozen. I have sources for it. Really, just about everything. I, I could eliminate the grocery store completely. Well, do you sell your yogurt yet? Is that, is that something you're going to ever sell or you can't sell that? We can't for a couple reasons. One, we can't sell because the yogurt we're making, all of that bacteria is patented, believe it or not, um, which is just makes me insane. I'm a capitalist, but I can't believe we allow companies to patent a living bacteria, but they have. So it would be illegal for me to use that bacteria and sell it in a commercial product. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I can't believe they let them do it. Yeah, I know. I can't either. It looks like it's going to get worse. There's more of that going on because these companies are now realizing that the gut microbiome is like the new frontier in health. This is this is going to be everything. Yeah, and I think the pharmaceutical companies are going to want in on it. And we have to figure out some way of fighting back. Our little way of fighting back was, well, if I can't sell it, I'll give it away. Um, and we can only do yeah. that on a, on a limited basis. But then the other problem for us would be we are not set up to, to ship temperature controlled. And temperature controlled shipping gets really expensive. It requires a whole new setup for us. And um, we're just not there yet. And I don't know if we ever will. We'll, we'll see. Uh, it's, it's not out of the question. But we have looked at a couple products over the years we really wanted but that whole temperature control thing and government regulations require that anything fermented has to be temperature controlled, even though it's not really required for safety. That's just their regulations. Just another regulation they threw in there just for giggles. Exactly. Yeah, no real purpose behind it. I mean, we tell people, sure, leave your ferments out for a month if you want, but you can't ship them for two days without refrigerating them. Wow. Well, is there anything I could buy over the counter that is okay as far as yogurt goes, or is it all just sugar and crap in there? Well, even if we go to, there are a couple good brands. Grass Milk is one of them. Um, Nancy's does some pure grass-fed organic at least then there's no junk, and you want to look for the high fat, no sugar, and they have them, just the plain yogurt. The But the other problem, and there, it'd be okay to eat those, but you're not going to get the kind of benefits we talk about because what we're after in yogurt is the bacteria. And yeah. commercial bacteria or commercial yogurts, even the best brands on the market, are only cultured for about four or five hours. So you only get one doubling of most of the bacteria. 
That's why we culture for 36 to 40 hours, and we're getting 18 doublings of bacteria. I see. So, yeah, if you want to eat yogurt as part of your diet, make sure you're getting, like I said, grass milk, Nancy's. uh, There might be a couple others out there. You want high fat, no sugar, and grass-fed milk. That's what you're looking for in yogurt. But just know you're not going to get any real probiotic benefit from that because it just doesn't have enough bacteria. Yeah, mostly it's just for dessert. You know, like instead of eating... Th- yeah. then that would be fine. Yeah, just get a good quality, high fat, no sugar, grass-fed milk, and you'll be fine. And and you're right. It makes a good dessert. How about kimchi? Is there a, a good over-the-counter? Tons. Uh, tons. Wild. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Wild brine. Um, I, I found one that's the it. other day. That's, that's um, mother-in-law's kimchi. Not a big national brand, but I've seen it in a couple places. I really like the taste of that one. Um, what's the other one that I have? I've got two jars in my refrigerator right now. They're the square kind of rectangular clear plastic, big black lid on them. I just can't think. I don't think that's Wild Brine. I don't know what brand that is. I, I but that, um, Wild Brine's got a sour a, a, a couple of different colors. They got like Korean. They've got a maybe it is uh, wild brine then, because I've got a yeah. right now. I've got a Korean kimchi and I've got a horseradish kimchi that's really interesting. Yeah, that's it. I bet that is okay. It, good. I can get those. Those are at the grocery store. I, I don't have any trouble. When do you eat that? Is that an empty stomach before meal? Yeah type thing or snack or what what do you do with kimchi here's what i use it i eat it more like a condiment than anything else so here's my favorite meal right now because i'm eating fermented carnivore so my favorite meal i open up a jar of my my canned meats like a shredded pulled pork uh, pulled turkey whatever i've canned I heat that up, and then I put the cold kimchi right on top of it, like a condiment. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. I do that a lot with with turkey. I know you don't like turkey because it's low, but I add a lot of butter to it to to uh, oh, no, I, a lot of healthy. I'd love turkey. You okay with that? I'd love turkey. Yeah, I, that's, okay. that's our That's our newest thing to can because – Lisa absolutely, and so do I. She absolutely loves the canned turkey. So we'll take, I'll usually go get two big, like two 20 pound turkeys, 22 pounds, whatever I can get. I'll, uh, we'll roast them till they're not quite done. They're just done enough that you can pull them apart because then we're going to can them and they're going to get cooked even more. And then I'll, I'll uh, pack the bottom of the jar, the canning jar, with raw onion and roasted hatch green chilies. I get fresh hatch green chilies every year and roast them, and then I freeze them so I have them all year. And I'll pack that in the bottom of the jar, pack the turkey in as much as I can, top off the jar with bone broth and can it. And when you open that jar, you can just eat that turkey right out of the jar. It is amazing. It's so good. But then really? put a little kimchi on top of it. It's amazing. Yeah, I, uh, I'll i try that. I mean, hey, here's, 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 uh, here's another one. Here's an interesting thing. I, I don't know why I didn't think about this before. Um, it works with kimchi. But it works even better with, like, just some of the fermented sauerkrauts on the market. I've got a garlic sauerkraut that's really good. I've got a pretty traditional sauerkraut. Take those, whether it's the kimchi or the traditional sauerkraut. Mix in a little of the um, either your homemade mayo or the Primal Kitchen mayo. And Primal Kitchen also does a chipotle lime mayo. Mix some of that yeah. in with your fermented cabbage and kimchi and sauerkraut, and it makes it kind of creamy and really? rich and adds some fat to it. That's pretty incredible. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've got all that in my refrigerator now. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'm going to do that. Try that. What do you, what do you think about, what do you think about my, my problem with eating healthy at home versus when I come up to the cabin and just being like Superman and not, like I don't even get hungry. I eat twice a day and it's just, it's just crazy how, how 
how much different it is. My guess is you're alone a lot more at the cabin. Always. Yeah. Um, it's much easier for me to eat exactly the way I want to eat when I've been on the road for the last six weeks. Because when I'm around other people, I cook for them. I tend to, there's more distractions. There's much more going on. Then I tend to kind of rush my meals sometimes. But, you know, when when you're just alone a lot, and I I have been, well, usually when the day's over, I'm alone a lot. Um, During the day when I'm at some place like Pittsburgh Power or parked in my family's driveway, then I'm swamped all day with people and questions and talking, uh, which means I probably don't eat at all during the day. Um, and then at night, I, I'm pretty much alone because I need a break from people and I need some downtime. And, you know, it's when I get creative or read or write. And it, it's this is the healthiest I eat. Wow. Yeah, that's, it's, it's such a good feeling to eat healthy. You wake up in the morning and you eat and you don't want to lay back down. Right. You actually like I I ate and then I went mountain biking and exactly. like never happened before i was right. like well, what there's no way i could do that i just ate yep i know <laughs> i know so. it uh it food is really really powerful medicine and energy when we eat the right stuff yeah well glad you're back on and uh good luck to you and i'll i'm i'm, I'm i've got to be your biggest fan if i'm not your biggest fan i'm right right up there <laughs> well thank you i appreciate it i really do let's uh uh, I've got one more call here on the line. I'm going to grab some calls off the website because I said I would. So uh, let's go to Michigan. Tim, welcome to the program. Hey, Kevin. That last caller is totally wrong. <laughs> I'm your biggest fan. He's not. So. That's, that's what we need. <laughs> and I'm not even a truck driver. <laughs> we're we're going to have some cage matches to figure out who's the biggest fan. I like it. Let's go, buddy. Let's yeah. go. Let's, you want to be? <laughs> there you go. But he, no, he. He is correct, though. When I'm up at the studio up north and it's just me and the dog, I'll go out shedding. I'll do all kinds of stuff because I think you're not in part like a social regiment when you're back home in the city or in the neighborhood or whatever. It seems like we have social guidelines or there's a time to eat or a time. I'll paint at three in the morning. I won't do that downstate in the other studio. You know what I mean? So you get out and your adrenaline's going. You're super stoked. You're excited to be out in the wilderness. I think that's the key. I, I think you're right. I, I, you know, he talked about being in the cabin. You talked about being out yeah. in nature. We're getting back to our hunter-gatherer roots yeah. when we do that. And I, I do think it makes a difference. But then here's another one I just thought about as you were talking. When I first took off on this trip, I think it was like the first three weeks at least, I came on the air a couple times and said, the only food I've eaten this entire time is my own food. Well, when I'm at Pittsburgh Power, I'm eating out yep. because people invite me. I'm not going to say yep. no. You know, I, I get invitation. Hey, hey, you're here. It's good to see you again. Let's go to dinner. Um, we went out for wings the other night. The place we go to, they're famous for breading their wings. I'm like, ah, you know what? I can't do the breaded thing. I, I'll order them naked, which they did. They were fine. It, that's one of the options on the menu. But... I guarantee they were fried in one of the worst oils imaginable, and they reuse the oil over and over and over to super high temperatures. I, that's what got me the last long trip when I was on the road. It was the bad oils eating out at restaurants too often. So, I, you know, that's I, exactly right. I, I got to kind of manage that a little bit. I don't want to say no. I do want to yep. go out. I want to enjoy people's company and be with them and, and having. But yep. several times I've said, hey, look. I appreciate the invitation, but what about if you just come out and hang out with my coach and I'll make dinner instead? Um, so I've done that a couple yeah, times no, too. That way you're in, con- you're in control of your own destiny at that point. Exactly. You know, and, and you know me, I mean, before COVID we were doing 10, 12 cruises a year and, and you're subject to what they have. And they look at me because everybody else is just binging at the, at the trough. Right. I'm just looking for some roast beef and some right. meat. And you look at me like, wait, don't you want, don't you want 17 more items on this? And pile yeah, it on. Yeah, so. or or the people are making their third trip to the all you can eat ice cream Sunday yeah. bar. <laughs> That's exactly right. But uh, so the reason I called real quick, and I'll let you go. You've been on for a while here. Um, so I was 
totally intimidated. I, I know I'm a big fan because I buy every product you, you mentioned to get the garments and all these things. Cause I'm a sucker for that, but I want to support and I want to support you and I want to support let's truck. So I buy all everything always that you recommend the uh, all American pressure cooker. I bought two about two and a half years ago. I could probably sell them in the tire cause I hear everybody <laughs> wants to cute and watch them, but I've been, Kevin, I've been so, so intimidated by screwing some shit up that I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, you got me going because we can sell auctions of crazy abstract paintings in front of 400 people. And I, and I love it, but to smash cabbage into a jar and put it on a shelf, I can't do. So I watched your video. I, I yeah. want to address it before. I, I, I think it's because we've been brainwashed about our food supply. Like, like yeah. we, we, it's over sanitized. It's packaged. It, yep. You look around the world, you've traveled, my God, look at some of these open-air yep. meat markets where they pull in with an old nasty truck, and in the back of it there's animal carcasses piled up, and they just yep. drag them out and throw You're them on the ground. absolutely right. Right. We, we love the street food in Vietnam. Okay, I'm sure they swatted the flies off before exactly. we even got there. So you're right. Yeah. You're right. Right. So so the intimidation factor, I, so I'm back on watching your videos. You did, um, it looked like Pico de Gallo, but you were, you were making the salsa. Right. And I'm a salsa god. I said, if, listen, if that's all that it takes, all day long. So I bought all the jars that you said. I bought the lids, the, the, the stick that you smash it. It should be here today. Excellent. And, but here's the question. So I bought, I bought quart jars. And so I'll have them downstate and upstate, you know, so when I go back to paint or whatever, I'll have some stuff there. If I open up a quart jar and only use maybe half of it because I'm by myself, for example, can I, what's the shelf life like on meat or whatever? Once you open it, is it like a one and done or can you re-ferment? Can you add on top of it like you well, can with sauerkraut well, or is it a one and done? Let's separate meat, canned meat and fermented vegetables. Cause I don't want to get those okay. two things screwed up. Canned meat. Let's talk about that first. As long as it's in the jar and the lid is still still sealed, it is safe forever. There is no time limit. Now, the, the quality over years could deteriorate. It might get a little mushy. It might pick up some off flavors. But it will be safe as long as that jar is sealed. I just ate some the other day from 2017. There wasn't even any deterioration in it. Five years old, tasted just like any other can I opened after, you know, a couple months. So meat, now once you open it, treat it just like any other meat you just cooked. It probably a couple days. I, I, you know, I don't know how much more I would push it okay. than that. Um, it, there are probably, you know, we could probably eat meat that's significantly older than that, but a lot of it has to do with your gut bacteria and a bunch of other things. So to stay safe, treat canned meat once it's opened like any other meat you cooked. You know, throw it in the refrigerator two or three days, four days, probably just fine. I, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Okay. Now, fermented vegetables, totally different. Um, once you open it, um, really doesn't change anything because it was never really sealed anyway. I mean, that, that we that stuff's been exposed to air all the time. We haven't really, like, tried to sanitize it and then seal it so it stays that way. We've had this exposed to air and bacteria. What preserves it is... Once the well, the salt level is the first step. That salt tends to keep bad bacteria out, but allows good bacteria to grow. Then the good bacteria itself is what preserves the food because it crowds out the bad bacteria. I have had ferments that have been over a year, and I still eat them. Bingo. Well, that those lids that you have in your video, the black lids with the orange top, you say that air can get in and not out or the other way around. Out, out can you use those in. for out and not in? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to ask how do it so, know, but I don't want to know. <laughs> no, here's, here's what happens. So you've seen one way valves before. That's all that is. Sure. So the okay. fermenting builds up pressure because carbon dioxide gets created. Um, some ferments, if you get a really strong ferment, you can feel the carbon dioxide. It'll tingle your tongue, almost like a, uh, a carbonated right. beverage will. Um, right. So yeah. that pressure 
The reason we use those fermenting caps is because it allows the pressure out. Now, if you want the safest, you know, foolproof ferment, that lid also stops any bacteria, bad bacteria, from getting back in. That could cause some mold in your ferment. But you look at the Eastern Europeans and the way they do sauerkraut in crocks down in their, you know, root cellar, those are open to the environment, and they're down there for years. They just keep rotating new cabbage and salt in and take some out and put some more back in. And Love it. This stuff's down there for years. Yeah, of course. And, and, and those lids are, are applicable to whether it meat, vegetables, or whatever, though, right? I mean, it's not specific. No, the lids are. Now, again, we haven't yet talked about fermenting meat. I, I haven't done any fermented meat. That That's a little different. It's a little there's some different things you do so when we talk about lids there are specific lids for canning that's what we're doing with meat okay and then there are specific lids for fermenting now the specific lids for canning those that's the lid you get when you buy the the jars the mason jars or the ball or the the jar or whatever yeah Yeah, it comes with that the two-piece lid with the little ring on it and the seal that's what you use for canning Right, and you don't wash those, right? I mean, you just rinse them off because the the, the washer or whatever dishwasher would probably eradicate that seal, right? Yeah, no, it, you you can't hurt that seal. You can run those lids and rings through the dishwasher on okay. you know high temperature, sterilized. Not going to hurt anything. But we also now know, for the most part, anything that you're going to process more than about ten minutes. It, which is everything, whether you're doing water bath canning or pressure or whatever, anything that you're going to be doing more than 10 minutes, you don't have to go through that step of sterilizing everything like they always told us. Got it. Well, keep those videos coming. You could give me a page to read. I'll, I'll forget everything after the second sentence. You can walk me through it. If you show me a video, that's what I need. Good. Just keep those Good. videos coming. Awesome. We'll yeah. do. So appreciate it. Thank you for everything. We'll talk to you soon. You're welcome. Thanks for the call. All right. right. That is going to wrap up the calls online. I'm going to run through some of the uh, questions we had from the website. I asked for them. You put them up there. I'm going to answer them. Uh, From Rick, wondering about using flavorings and sweeteners and making yogurt. Absolutely. Um, Just be careful of your carb count if you are are watching your carbs, and most of us are. Uh, I've mentioned one of my favorites, um, half a cup of yogurt, a teaspoon of real pure maple syrup, and a little bit of cinnamon. That one's amazing. Um, Fresh or frozen berries, great ways to... uh, to flavor and if you want a little bit of sweetness and you are watching your carb count stevia works pretty good in uh in yogurt i also like using uh, maple sugar in yogurt a little bit of maple sugar too uh let's see from chad what do you use for a starter for all the other kinds of yogurt each specific yogurt requires a specific strain of bacteria that, that's how we do it. Each different yogurt is a different strain. So that is your starter. Um, if you go to the yogurt um, video demonstration on HealthyTribe.com, we list all the different strains of bacteria, and we even link to where you can buy them. And then, of course, you use the uh, inulin and the dairy for all of them. Uh, let's see... From Brad, what are natural antihistamines? I still have short fits of sneezing this time of year with the new pollen floating around. The best natural antihistamine is local raw honey. It needs to be local, though. If it, it needs to be from as close to where you live as possible because then it will basically vaccinate you. Here's a good use of the word vaccinate. Um, good local raw honey will vaccinate you against that pollen. You'll get little bits of it in the honey as you eat it, and it kind of inoculates your body. Uh, It's the best one I know of. might be the only one I know of. Now, there are foods you can eat to strengthen your immune system. There are supplements. 
anything that strengthens your immune system might cut down on your uh, kind of uh, pollen issues. In spring and fall is when they tend to be worse. Uh, let's see. Been taking your immune supplement for a while now. This is from John. Haven't had any illnesses. How long should I continue to take this? Uh, do the coffee every morning, cardio miracle, and omega-3 daily. Thanks. Uh, that's a tough one. If you're eating a really clean diet, I tell people j- just experiment with your supplements. Cut the dose in half, see what happens. Drop it completely for a while. Let's see what happens. And I'll give you a good example. Uh, I take vitamin D every day. I take uh, light balance every day. And I, for the last while, except for the 30 days, I'm also now taking Cardio Miracle every day. I think that's a really, really good daily supplement, Cardio Miracle. And there's another benefit to it. You, you have to put it in water, and you should take it twice a day, one scoop in the morning, one scoop at night. That's you know, another 24 ounces of water that I'm drinking. And sometimes when I get busy, I just don't drink enough. So the light balance or the uh, cardio miracle, great daily supplement for a lot of things. Excellent for high blood pressure, uh, energy, endurance. uh, But it's also pretty darn good for the immune system. So John, I would say drop your uh, drop the immune supplement for a while. Um, make sure you're taking vitamin D because the 30 days I quit my supplements, I ended up sick for the first time in eight years. But that's how we test things. Let's see. Daniel, when multiplying the CFUs in the yogurt, do we continue to add to the last batch's numbers? No. Uh, I don't know how that would work. Um, We don't really know a lot about the bacterial counts without doing a lot of testing. Uh, It's on my list to try to figure out if there is some way we can learn more about this. Uh, I think I'm going to schedule a call with Dr. Davis and see if he can help me out with this too. Uh, Let's see. From John, would you be willing to share the process used if any more than weaning off and the length of time uh, you and Lisa used when getting off Effexor? Any supplements during or after? Um, No supplements only because um, we didn't really, I I was not a fan of supplements back then. That was when I said, oh, supplements are like fuel additives. They don't do anything. Well, they can under the right circumstances with the right supplements. I certainly believe that now. Um, Length of time. Lisa would probably remember this better than I do, but I think it was more than a month. I think she started cutting down her dose slowly over time. Then we started cutting the lowest dosage pills in half. Then she started taking them every other day. Then she would go two days in between. The longer you take, the easier the transition is. But it's also, you know, you got to remember what day and all that other stuff. Um, So there's, I don't think there's any magic number to this. And when we did it, I really didn't know that much um what i would recommend actually if you want to uh you know if you want to do a discovery call um we could take a look at some supplements i've never really thought about that but i think if i put some time and effort into thinking about that i'm sure positive there would be some supplementation that would help that process i need to work on that let me make a note um I think that's an interesting approach because an awful lot of people are on SSRIs. Effector is an SSRI, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Uh, A lot of people are on them. They don't really help much, and they're hard to get off of. But a supplement package to help with that, I'll bet, could be really, uh, really valuable making a note. I don't know why it's so hard for me to write and talk at the same time. Um, There we go. I got it. All right. That's going to do it for today. Uh, I need to go uh, get dirty. I have a couple more things left to do on the coach now that I have access to the garage and the tools and all the other stuff here at Pittsburgh Power. So I want to get that wrapped up, and I'm probably going to be getting back out on the road here in a day or two. Uh, I got to figure out if... um, I can make this work with Joel Salatin or not. I'd really like to get down there and see him. So we'll see, and I'll let you know. Maybe I'll uh, even be doing a live show from Polyface Farms. That would be fun. All right, we will uh, 
We'll see you back here tomorrow. I think we're going to try to do an episode of Rolling Toe. I have to reach out to Mike and see if he's feeling better. Uh, He was under the weather last week. We will see you then. Be safe. Be profitable. Be fit and healthy. Always do the hard work and master the journey. I'm Kevin Rutherford.